Today I walk you through the complete process of rigging a bow in Blender 4.4. We are going to take it step by step, making the rig fully functional and ready for animation by the end of this video, so make sure to stick around. Alright, we are now inside of Blender version 4.4 and I've already imported my bow and arrow models into the scene. If you would like to follow along using the exact same models, you can find the project files available on CGTrader or Sketchfab. The first thing we'll do is clean up the scene a little bit. I'll start by selecting the arrow and pressing H to hide it from the scene. Now with just the bow visible, I will select the bow model to make it the active object. You can tell it's the active one because it got this bright yellowish outline. Before we jump right into rigging, there are a few important things to double check on your model. First. Make sure the geometry is clean with no overlapping or duplicate vertices. This helps to avoid problems later on. Also, check that all normals on your model are facing the right direction. To do this, open the viewport overlay panel and enable face orientation. Any face that shows up red have flipped normals, which can cause issues during the rigging process. If you spot flipped faces, just switch the edit mode, select them and press Alt N to flip the normals to the correct orientation. Next, we need to adjust the origin point of the bow. Before adding the armature, it's really important that the origin is centered on the handle. This will make rigging much easier later on. To set this up, I will select the middle edge loop of the handle and then press Shift S to open the Snap Pie menu. From there, I'll choose the cursor to select mode which moves the 3D cursor exactly to the handle. Once that's done, I will switch to object mode, right click the bow and choose set origin and then origin to 3D cursor. Now the origin is perfectly placed at the handle. With the 3D cursor in place, it's time to create the armature. I press shift and A and add an armature to the scene. Then I tap into edit mode so we can actually start building the armature. To make the armature easier to see, I will go into the property panel, click the armature icon and enable the in front option under the viewport display settings. Now no matter where the bones are, they will always stay visible in front of the bow's geometry. Starting with the base bone, I will press E to extrude it and create three large bones, placing them along the stiff parts of the bow. These sections won't bend when the bow is animated. Keep in mind, your own model may vary, so place these bones where it makes the most sense for your design. Next, I'll extrude several smaller bones for the sections where the bow will actually bend. If I need to repeat this last extrusion very quickly, I can easily press Shift plus R to repeat the last action. Don't worry too much about getting the positions perfect right now, we can always tweak them later on. The number of bones you create here depends heavily on your model, and there's no real limit. Just add as many as you feel necessary for a smooth bend. Once I'm happy with the main structure of the armature, I will create a few extra helper bones that we can use for the inverse kinematic constraints later on. Starting from the end of the previous bone chain, I'll extrude another bone and scale it along the x-axis. I'll name this bone top underscore RK, so it's easier to find. Then I duplicate this bone and scale it a bit further along the x-axis and rename it top underscore limit. Before moving on, I will switch to x-ray mode by pressing Z. I will select both helper bones and clear the parent relationships by pressing Alt and P and choosing clear parent. This ensures they are independent and ready for the next steps. Now it's time to build the core of the IK system. I select the base of the top underscore IK bone and extrude a new bone backwards towards the bow handle. If necessary, I can flip the bone's direction by pressing Alt F, ensuring it points away from the handle. With that out of the way, I parent the top underscore IK bone to this new bone. I press Ctrl and P and choose Keep Offset, or you can just select the new bone from the parent drop-down menu while the top underscore IK bone is selected. This finishes the top half of the armature. To create the bottom half, we will just mirror everything downwards to build the bottom half. First, I'll make sure the transformation pivot point is set to 3D cursor. 
That option is right on the top of the viewport available. Once that ready, I select all the bones, pressing A, and duplicate them with Shift D, and then scale them along the Z axis by minus one. This creates a perfect mirrored copy of the bottom of the bow. After duplicating, I will go through everything and rename the mirrored bones to avoid confusion later on. For example, I will change top underscore AK to bottom underscore AK and top limit to bottom limit. With the main structure down, we now need to add another bone for the string. This bone will control the bow's draw and release animation. I'll create a new bone by pressing Shift A and then I rotate it 90 degrees around the Y axis and rename it to string. Once that done, I'll clear its parent by pressing Alt P and choosing clear parent. Then I'll move the string bone along the X axis so its base sits exactly in the middle of the bow string. We also need a main control bone that will act as a parent for the entire armature. So I'll create another bone, name it main and align it along the X axis centered at the bow's origin. Now I select all the bones don't have a parent. This includes the helper bones and the start bones of the bending chains. With the main bone active, I parent everything to it using Ctrl P, choosing Keep Offset. Once everything is properly connected, I parent the bow's mesh to the armature. In object mode, I first select the bow, like the mesh, and then the armature. The armature should now be highlighted in a bright yellow color. I press Ctrl P and choose with automatic weights. This will bind the entire mesh to the bones. To check if the parenting worked, I go into pose mode and move the bones individually around. If the mesh deforms somewhat correctly, we are good to go. If not, we can switch to weight paint mode and adjust the bones influences manually. It's important to select both the mesh and the armature and making sure this time the mesh is the active one. I can then check the weight influence for each bone by selecting Ctrl, Shift and left click each individual bone. If the weight paint didn't work properly, you should definitely double check the mesh for duplicate vertices or holes that might cause the issues. Now that the mesh is bound to the rig, it's time to set the constraints that will make the entire rig functional. I'll start by setting up the controls for the string bow. I select the string bone and add a limit location constraint from the objects property tab. In the constraint setting, I set the owner space to local and enable all limits on all three axes. I limit the X axis movement by setting the minimum value to minus 0.2 and the maximum value to 1.5. This ensures that when animating, the string bone stays on its path and doesn't move around uncontrollably. Next, I'll set up the inverse kinematics constraints. I select the last small bone in the top bending section and add an IK constraint from the property menu. I'll set the target to the armature and for the bone I will choose the top underscore IK bone. Then I'll adjust the chain length to match the entire length of the deformable bones. In my case, there are 12 bones, including the one I'm selecting. So you should make sure that it matches your own number of bones. To prevent the bow from stretching too far, I'll add a limit distance constraint. I select the top underscore limit bone and assign the constraints in the properties tab. I set the target to the string bone and adjust the distance to match the string bone's set position. You can find this value in the end panel while in edit mode. In Blender 4.4, the set position will automatically pass into the input field, which is pretty convenient. Lastly, I'll add a track to constraint to ensure that the bow curves naturally. I select the large stiff bone and add the constraint from the menu. The target will be the top underscore limit bone. I will enable the influence on the Y and Z channels, but you should definitely make sure to disable the target Z option. This prevents unwanted deformation during extreme movements. And that's it for the top side of the rig. Everything should now behave exactly as intended. And at this point, I will repeat all the steps we just made to apply the constraints to the bottom half of the bow. 
take your time here to ensure that everything is symmetrical and that the parroting is correct. I will speed up this part in post-production, but make sure that you are using the correct bottom counterparts of the bones when setting up the constraints. And there you have it. You have just completed your first fully functional bow rig in Blender. With this setup, animating the bow is now super easy. You can simply move the string bone in pose mode and thanks to the IK system and the constraints the bow will bend and release realistically in real time. If you found this tutorial helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out a ton. If you got any questions or suggestions for the future, make sure to drop a comment down below. You can also join our Discord server, which is linked in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.